sort of um, gatherings and we can potentially even have conferences in here, talks, book launches, um, small performances. So it's, yeah, it really allows for a space to hold um, our visitors and, and, and our audience in between shows, before shows and for relevant events. Um, I don't know if you can see the small cafe sign there up the back, but yeah, that's going to be a space again where we're looking at potentially having a, a box, a ticketing office and a cafe space. Um, at that part of the, the, west wing, the bottom of the west wing there as you enter the building um, and this space over here is also a nice open space that we're looking at potentially um, developing to hold exhibitions or small events and that will obviously lead through to the uh, banquet room, the banquet hall. This is our Sir Owen Glen Theatre, I can say that now. <laughs> Sir Owen Glen Theatre, so you'll, um, you'll recognise this space. This is our thousand seat theatre, or, or thereabouts. Um, I think it's 984 to be exact. Um, you can see that we're looking at integrating state-of-the-art acoustic um, materials so that it um, allows for um, the, the added seats and the, the capacity to hear um, and to have a quality of sound throughout for various performances, for um, live sound, um, for, for you know dance, rec pre-recorded, um, and also we're looking at the story that will be imbued into the walls and into um, the stage and the space. Um, we've also got the last amount of funding has allowed us to add in the um, orchestra pit lift, which will make this, um, which really has brought this whole project up um, to the level of a, you know, a state-of-the-art regional facility. There's no facility like this in the Bay of Plenty, the Central North Island, so we're very, very fortunate to um, have this wonderful um, resource for shows, like what shows will be in here? Opera, ballet, musical theatre. The Rautotoro Musical Theatre Society will be excited to know that we're, we're making sure that this is going to be fit for purpose for all those wonderful musicals. Um, Greece is at the EEC opening next week, so make sure you get there. Or well, I think it's actually November, f November first. Yeah. Um, so yes, yeah, so this is a very, very exciting, and I think as well, I've had, um, I've spoken to the uh, past director of the ASB Waterfront Theatre in Auckland, um, and also um, Q Theatre. And this really is in terms of the performing arts um, production facility, it really is on par with some of our leading uh, theatres around the country, so we're going to be really fortunate to have this exciting venue. And then of course our concert concert chamber space, um, we're looking at having this uh, be a semi-flexi form space. Now, uh, what does that mean? It means that we will be able to have the audience in a number of places, so for example, um, we will be able to have them in this configuration, which is known as end stage, which is where the audience, much like you're sitting here and I'm up here, so that's one configuration. Another is what you call thrust, where the audience are um, vertical on either side of this, oh, yes, yes, horizontal, sorry, a, a, um, across the space, and the stage is actually in the middle, um, and that's quite popular with intimate theatre, that's sort of the current, um, standard for touring shows at the moment um, and I think configurations really depend on trend as well what what shows are doing um, for a while in the round which is I think you can probably guess the stage is in the middle and the audience is right around um, that was popular so yeah what the space and the flexibility of the space will allow us to do is to maintain um, you know the ability to be flexible with current trends uh, making it again uh, a wonderful sort of facility that um, is on par with many of our main centres and their theatres. Um, we're looking at how we can maximise the acoustic potential in here as well for both live um, amplified sound and live sound. So, yeah, we're still looking at ways that we can have a space that allows us to have no mics and um, obviously, as I mentioned, amplified sound. So yeah, this is a work in progress. This has a 300 seat retract, uh, a 300 seat retractable block. 
So, um, and we're also looking at getting mobile seating blocks. So what that means is that there will be um, a block that sort of uh, can come out at various stages. I think it might be, and we haven't worked out yet whether it's in 50s or 100, but basically if you had a show that needed um, 200, uh, 200 packs, 200 capacity, um, you would be able to bring the movable seating block out to meet, to meet that capacity. Um, oh, questions at the end if that's okay. Um, and also, but also, if you weren't wanting to use the seating block, you could tuck it away and bring in the mobile seating box, which would allow you to achieve the partial round, in the round, and thrust um, seating setup. Uh, this is sort of a, a bird's eye view of the bones, the current plans. Um, I won't sort of linger on these for too long, but I do just want to point out that um, some of the feedback um, around the current space was that there, there was a lack of toilets in, um, in the bottom floor. So we've actually got, I think I counted, there's four, so 22 in total, including the accessible toilets on the bottom floor. Um, and it, you can also see here as well how much more open the, the plans are. So it's just going to allow for flow of um, audience, um, you know, coming in and out between shows and, um, yeah, also utilising the spaces much more. Um, yeah, I think that was one. Oh, and I just also wanted to point out up the top left is the courtyard area that's being proposed outside the cafe. Um, so that'll be a north facing courtyard area and it also allows another access point into the building, which was also some of the feedback um, received from the community around access. Uh, so yeah, that will be up where the West Wing currently is. Um, so that will be landscaped and developed and potentially even be um, another leasable, um, oh, you know, another space where we can hold performing arts activations. Um, with this part, so this is the mezzanine, this is the um, second floor. I just want to talk to you a little bit about the, I don't know if you can read it from here, but 2.1, 2.15 and 2.4, well, 2.1415 and 1.7. So those are new developments, they're studios, we're calling them studios, so they might be used for recording, um, music, for... for breakout performances, for um, conferences, um, for smaller functions, so that's the 2.14, and I, I believe it's 10 by 10, is the, yeah, so, um, and then 2.15 and 2.17, um, they will be, again, hireable spaces. Um, those doors, the sort of squiggles you can see there at the bottom of 2.14, they're um, acoustic doors, so they can actually be drawn across as well to separate. Uh, 2.14 and the foyer space. Um, the foyer space 2.01 that could be utilised again for potential exhibitions, um, presentations, um, functions. So yeah, it's really uh, again a, a, a much more sort of um, it's a it's an appropriate use of the space up there. Uh, that's going to allow for a lot more flexibility and a lot more functions that were not potentially able to be in these spaces beforehand. Um, I think, yeah, I'll just move on from there. Uh, this was just to show some of the existing materials that have been pulled from the space um, and just the inconsistencies in, in, the, in the materials and why actually we're needing to go through this. Um, I just want to talk about the seismic strengthening technology. Um, so you can see this, you can see this circle there in the middle, that's a steel ring. And how the technology is going to work is that um, on the long walls in the in the in the um, building, we're going to have a technology where there's a steel ring in between the wall. Um, what do you call them? Wall plates. Cavity. Wall cavities. Yeah. And what's going to happen is, is in a, an earthquake, rather than the wall move up and down as one big long wall, when, which creates fissures and damage um, in the midst of an earthquake, the walls are going to move up and down along that steel ring, which will allow for that movement and um, that's sort of how some of the flexible, um, the strengthening technology is working in there which I thought was pretty exciting. Um, so again this is a timeline, um, 
you can see here, this is also available on the um, Vision to Action link that I'll share with you at the end of this um, talk. Um, as you can see, it, as mentioned, we started in November 2017, the um, then it closed, and we're hoping to open uh, in mid-2021. Um, again, if you go to um, the, the Vision to Action, do you have the link there, Jo? Vision to Action. If you actually just go to the um, Facebook Live, we'll make sure to post the exact link in there. But this is available, a resource that's available to us now. So if you wanted to go back and revisit any of the points I've spoken about today, uh, or actually look deeper into some of the, like the project timeline, what's happened so far, the consultation process, um, this, this website has all of the information that you'll need to get a bit of a deeper understanding of where we've come from, where we're going, and we will hopefully, where we will eventually uh, end up. Cool, so, um, e te whānau, um, koe nei te kōkiro tūta o tēnei, uh, kaupapa. So this is just the first talk of hopefully many uh, where I can now sit with you and keep keep you up to date with what's happening um, and yeah I'm just very grateful that you came out to hear about uh, the progress of this uh, this amazing kaupapa and journey uh, for our community so uh, questions Kia ora, how are you? Um, I just would like a clarification on why we have gone to a thousand seats and in the process of going to a thousand seats have been taken into account your new site lines, your new operating areas for your technical things such as lighting and sound. We were going to go like, I didn't see them on that, yeah. on that sketch you had on the, on the I saw the <coughs> levels of fire if I had the sound battle. Oh, of course. And why the thousand? We didn't have a thousand. Yes. And we went back to the 689 because most nights that's more than the apple. So mm -hmm. why the thousand? Thank you. Thank you very much. I, I've got to be honest with you, I asked the same question when I started. <laughs> But um, what I found out was that uh, post the Howarth, who were engaged to do the business, um, the business plan, it was discovered that in fact a thousand was what was a wanted, but also needed in our region. So currently, we will be the only uh, facility in the Bay of Plenty with a thousand seat theatre. So it was really to serve that regional need, and I think as well um, to be, and you know, there is a level of. Um, I suppose aspiration as well in that that we, we hope to uh, build a facility that will bring people not only from our own community but from Whakatane, Tauranga, Taupo. So uh, yeah, that was that was why. Those were the two reasons why. And regarding the technical aspects, again, a question I asked and I've been fortunate to meet Phil, who is a part of the who's a theatre expert working um, with uh, on you know he's with the Shan Sheldon team. And he's working on sight lines, and he's also been working with our own team as well, our, our technicians, and Ray Philpott on um, the sound, um, the sound science, and how to utilise and to make sure that when we open, we're a fit for purpose space that local, national, and international companies will be able to utilise to perform into you know world class events. So, so just to talk about supplementary question. So the extra seating. Mm. Yeah, about so that. Is that going, how do you configure it? Is it going up in the levels or going further down in the building? Yeah, so it'll be down at the back um, at the uh, moment. Upstairs. No, upstairs at the back, sorry. Upstairs yeah. at the back. Um, but again, this is still in the developed design, um, the final developed design phase. So we're actually getting the full presentation next Friday. So we'll be able to answer then exactly where it's going. But Shan Sheldon have been working alongside Phil, who is a part of Shan Sheldon as well, but he's the technical, he's a theatre expert. So he's sort of, and he has also worked on Q Theatre, he worked on the um, theatre in Marlborough, so, you know, he's done this a few times, so we're really looking forward to 
to see how exactly he's made it all work, but he has it, and so it's exciting. Any other questions? Thank you for that question. Yeah. The concert chamber, um, the picture you showed had an elevated stage at one, one end, mm. but you also talked a lot of flexibility, so I'm presuming that that can... Mobile stage. Okay. Yeah. That's a stage. So we're also looking at getting um, uh, dance floors as well, because I can see Tanya Kildewa up the back there. We have we have um, reached out to some you know touring artists to ask them what they would like and what they need to bring their artwork here. And it was for dancers. It was the floors, and also we've talked to Am Jazz and Pam and, and Ange Sampson, who are also so important to us. To make sure we get the design right so it's fit for their shows. Um, so yeah, we, we, we're going to have a mobile stage, which means that there's flexibility with where, yeah, where different um, companies want to perform their show. Kia ora, hello. Um, you mentioned that you were looking at the accessibility. Yes. Um, kia ora. yes, access has, has been um, something that's come up a lot for us in the consultation processes as well, and we're actually working directly with Access New Zealand at the moment, who, um, have, who are working alongside um, us with the design, so we're presenting them with the designs and we're in constant conversation with them about how we can get you know, the, the needs of, of our community. Definitely, so that is something that we're looking at. One of the things I will mention though is, um, unfortunately, since, um, since some of the events earlier this year, security is another uh, major issue that we're having to look at. And actually, it, it is true that sort of, sort of we're not going to be able to drive vehicles into cars anymore. That type of access is not going to be um, sort of the norm. So we're going to have to adapt with national standards as well. However, working with Access New Zealand will ensure that we're able to meet all of the requirements and be an accessible space to all members of our community. Will this actually be, um, just have a discussion around the table around it before it actually happens? Oh, there'll be more talks like this where you can yeah. absolutely ask, and, and I'm happy to look for our next talk, we can incorporate accessibility once we sort of look further. It's, it's huge. Oh. It's lovely having this group. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. That's right. And that's really important to us. So um, there will be talks in the future like this and the focuses will be different each time. So um, I've heard that, that is absolutely crucial to our community and I'm um, happy to focus the future talk on that. We're all in our future. Thank you very much for bringing it up. Hello. Well, she she's to a lot of developing the energy event sense for large audiences. Considered. The developing the energy event center for larger audiences? Yes. Well, actually, the, yes, the uh, other facil council facilities were considered and, and um, in terms of performing arts spaces and viability and, and, and at the end of the day the Energy Events Centre, it is a flexible space but it is not a fit for purpose performing arts space and venue and I know that, I mean I've been working closely with the team in Jolene to, um, we've had the Māori Science Steps there, the Matariki Glow Show which um, Jolene brought here through um, Sarah and the, and the company but even then, a lot of infrastructure has to be bought in. So, for example, for the Matariki Glow Show, I mean, the technicians are in the room now, how long it took to make that a black box theatre space um, it, it, when it wasn't, and the cost as well of the turnaround. So, yeah, it, it was all included in the business case, and it was decided that the best thing to do was to reopen 
and to make the Suhao and Morrison Performing Arts Centre a fit for purpose performing arts space first and foremost. Thank you. Hello. May I ask a financial question? You quote 22 and a half million for this project, um, but you haven't gone out to tender yet. So how likely are you to overrun the uh, amount of 22 and a half million? Mm, at the moment, that's not that's not the plan. It's 22 and a half million is what we've budgeted for to complete this project. Um, and that's what we are moving forward. So we can actually remind you of the time we've gone to <laughs> There is contingency, is there? Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, the steward's also yeah. here, but there is a con obviously a contingency allowance as well in that budget. Um, but Stuart, I yeah. want to say a couple so, of things. So how we manage that risk is that at each stage of the design process, it gets um, an estimate that's done by the quality surveyor. So they work alongside us every step of the way. So we have, have a list, a scheduled list of priorities that we have to have in there, and we've got a list of um, secondary um, priorities that we, if we have to give up, we have to give up, right? But um, so we have got some move. We've got 1.3 million dollars worth of contingency currently, and we we've got some ability to to, to move some of the um, costs around if we need to. But 22.5 million is what we've signed up to. So, um, so we've got. Yeah. Won't be any more than 22.5. We we may, we may have to give up some of those things. We won't know that until look. Um, what are we now? Um, by mid November, we have a contract from board. We're about to go out to tender next mm -hmm. week. That will give us a more accurate picture. We're fortunate that both the museum and Shinpak projects are going out together, and there is a potential for one contract to be able to do both. And if they do that, then we'll be able to leverage that. And get a better price for both. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Kia ora. Kia ora. Kia ora. Kia ora. Kia ora. Sir, there's actually a lakefront presentation you can come to, and, and that will be a half an hour talk solely on the lakefront. Do you know the next one? No. Sorry. I believe it's in the next fortnight, but if you love. Like, Yeah, Sir Yes, yep. so we've, we're fully funded for that. Can't buy, sir. Well, you're, you're, you're most welcome to feedback online, um, and your your perspective is valid. So, Kilda, how many? Yeah, maybe we can answer that. Um, out of the, the 22.5 million for this project, 11 of it <coughs> has come from outside um, funding sources. So, so Owen Glen lottery trusts. So, um, so really, we're it's getting a 25, 25 million dollar facility for 11 and a half million dollars of ratepayers' money that will serve this community for the next 20 years. That's reasonable value. If we were to knock it down and rebuild it, it's 70 million plus. So, for 11 million, we're getting a 70 million dollar. It was costing yeah. us. I think the cost to pull it down was more yeah. than actually um, strengthening it. To be fair, it wasn't always a performing arts facility though. It was a convention centre, it was a business centre, so it couldn't have just been reopened as a performing arts centre. The performing arts fit for purpose is what we're aiming for, um, and actually a lot of the touring companies, they can't at the moment use the facility the way it is because it is not, does not have the theatre abilities and technical requirements for them to be able to, to produce these shows. So um, that's what we're aiming to, to do. But thank you, sir. Now we're here. Any other questions? Clea, Kelda. Thank you so much for this presentation. And a big thank you to the council for having these roadshows where we get to, to talk and, and discuss. I think we're all here because we love the idea of the role of art to play in the community and in, in making our city of New World one love the fact that the, it is an aspirational size and it's going to be that draw card for things throughout our district and our region to bring people to Rotorua. And for the, the younger members of our city who, who haven't yet spent their lives going to the, the, Howard, the Howard Morrison Centre, I can't wait for us to spend the rest of our lives in Rotorua going and seeing things in, in this space, you know, seeing these pictures here. But I can really picture us all sitting there and that's a really wonderful thing. So thank you all for your work on this. Kia ora. Thank you. Kia ora. Thank you, Claire. Hello there, another question. Another question here. Um, the speaking in the concert chamber, in 
No, it's not the same as the bleach yeah. energy yeah. So we, we're well aware of the feedback for performing arts audiences around how um, the, the comfort level. Good question. Um, we're still working through the details of uh, of what of the colours and what exactly will, will look like, but no, they, they will be upholstered and comfortable. <coughs> Hello there. Apologies, this is Guy. Another question on seating. I had a quick count and it would seem that each row will have over 20 people sitting on them. But each, which which is that form there? The auditorium. Ah, yes, those details, those details are still being worked through, but yes. Well, from what I see, um, I, for one, would find this greatly difficult for having to get into a middle seat Thank you for your question. So the question was around emergency exits and access to the middle of the rows in the um, the Sir Owen Glen Theatre. So Stuart actually yeah. has. So I can answer that. The new um, compliance for seating for theatres now is that someone that's sitting down, someone is able to pass in front of you without you getting up. So that's the first thing about the, the 20 seat wide. The other thing, we did look at having a central aisle, but you lose the best vi uh, visual sight lines in the house. So that's why, well, the reason why they've retained on the side. There is additional fire egraces, particularly from the, um, the circle upstairs. So there are new fire egraces up there. Um, and downstairs is pretty similar to what we've got there now, but we have to meet the new compliance. So all those sorts of are considered when you put a thousand people in. Oh, okay, so it's actually uh, a homage as well, though, to Sir Howard Morrison. So, um, as so I mentioned earlier, in my, sorry, this is going to play up. As I mentioned earlier, we, were you at the beginning of the were you here for the beginning? Oh, okay. So the full presentation can be accessed online, but I spoke in detail about how the family were engaged, and then in 2014, it was decided that the facility would be renamed the Sir Howard Morrison Performing Arts Centre to honour his legacy in the community. And also there's been significant contribution from Ngāti Whakauwe um, and the Morrison Whānau to um, develop this, this latest concept for our Performing Arts Centre. But um, great questions, and again, you can find uh, more information on the Vision to Action uh, web link, which we'll share in the Facebook Live stream. Hello, another pathway. Kia ora. Still again about the, the, the concert chamber. Um, I'm presuming that there, that there will be a, a, a piano that will be available for this as well as for the, for the, um, or the main auditorium, the Sir Owen Glen. And if there is going to be a piano, um, I see that you've also changed the orientation um, of, of, of the seating on the picture so that the stage is going to be down that, down mm -hmm. that end instead of this end as it used to be. And so there would be presumably st um, storage for, a, for a, a, a grand or an upright grand or whatever would be used for that, for that venue. Yes, and our decision has been made around um, maintaining, so we'll have two pianos at least um, held at, at our, at our centre. Um, but in terms of the details around how, the good news is around um, the elevator, for example, it's been made um, to, so that now it can fit our grand pianos in there, so that when we're wanting them upstairs for events and functions, we can now actually transport them. So yeah, in terms of the, uh, being able to travel them, um, there's definitely, that, you know, that has been considered in the current designs. Um, and yeah, in terms of the details around how exactly they'll move in, in the theatre space, we need to work through um, and have a complete um, design to know what we're actually in function, look, look to our offspring and actually look at how we might move it around the space. But 
it, it's going to be very flexible. Yeah. So we're no, going to have many setups. Yeah. <laughs> I, I know that there'll be so many details as to that if that is to be used as a, as a concert chamber, then obviously a, a, a piano, a good quality piano, would of be course. a vital element yeah. of, of that. That's what yes, it. and this is good feedback for us too. So, you know, I mean, we that's our intention, but all of these sort of tips from people who use the space like yourself, it's, it's very important that it matters. So, thank you. Any other part of my... Hello. Hi. Um, can you give us some examples, maybe, of the type of companies, jewelry companies, and so on, national and international, and the extent to which the facility would be used to um, sort of make it? Uh, so I can talk to you a little bit about the vision. Um, so the vision is that we will be a facility that can hold a world-class opera, musical theatre, um, sorry, local theatre, um, music performances, uh, state-of-the-art stage shows um, that are current and relevant and that are touring New Zealand. Um, I've already been in conversation with the Royal New Zealand Ballet, who have expressed interest and excitement at the fact that we do have a, an 1,000 seat theatre, um, yeah. because uh, you know the ballet is one that usually sells out. So they're looking for our facility open again so they can start to book in. Um, obviously New Zealand Opera, um, uh, ARIA as well, which is a really important event to our community. Um, and even uh, little sort of musical theatre shows, you know, we're really, they're really missing their home. Uh, as is Anne Sampson, as is Am Jazz, so we really, we really are doing our best to make sure we can open this facility uh, so that we can have those wonderful events back in their intended space. Sorry, just to continue, but, mm -hmm. I to, but it will be used to the extent that it will cover the costs. Yes, and, and again, that will be a part of the um, operations brief once we start, and we're starting to work on that now. So, so uh, will this be the only theatre within the Bay of Anti Legion? I think you said before, which has this, this sort of capacity. Uh, yes. So we're not going to have competition. It's not we, look, we can't, we might. <laughs> and hopefully, in the future, the demand is enough that we can support each other in that as well. Um, I'm in conversations with Bay Court Theatre. Um, Whakatane, Taupo, and we all sort of talk about developing touring networks as well so that we can actually support each other with shows, um, past, past shows on around it via a regional, by a, a regional touring network. Um, but at this point in time, we will be the leading facility for performing arts in, in the Bay of Kitty. Any other part I Hello, another one. Don't please. ask another one. Um, th this is this is about about the cost to us when we want to hire it, mm -hmm. and um, I know that there are, were a variety of rates and there are community rates. Um, when when in the past I've tried to, to, to book it for various events, and I'm just you know by the time it's going to be, um, it looks pretty amazing. I'm scared. <laughs> is it going to have all these all these things? But yet we won't be able to afford to hire it. That's, yeah. that's my. So that'll be a part of my job to make sure that I come up with a model that allows access to um, for all for all members of our community and for um, those of us who aren't you know bringing a commercial production of national international um, uh, you know with, with national you know with those size budgets um, so yeah I'm I am, that means it means a lot to me to work on that to make sure that it can be accessed by anyone who wants to access it. So yeah, um, again, I'm really open to those conversations moving forward as we develop the operations brief. I, the, yeah. Yeah. I can just add to that, is that the way that, um, since the Arts and Culture Department has been set up within Council, we've started to work quite differently with the community. So we've got a number of ways that we work with you. We've done partnerships, so some of the shows that we've had in recent times, we've partnered up, we've taken on the risk on board, but we've provided those services like helping with marketing, growing audiences, those sorts of things, rather than just being this venue for hire. We don't want to be a venue for hire anymore. We want to engage with people, assist in developing performing arts audiences in, in, the, in the city and the region. So we do play slightly different roles. So we'll be an enabler, certainly if, if people just want to hire a facility, that's fine. But really our, our role is more than just opening the doors and saying, here you go. We want you to be successful, because if you're successful, the centre will be successful. You heard it from 
off his mouth, so hopefully I can help make it happen. Well, so. yeah. <laughs> and um, yeah, it's, it's a very exciting future. There's a very exciting future ahead, so I look forward to working with you all and um, yeah, really painting the walls with our stories. Thank you very much. My door's always open. Um, but I would also just say, please look at the Vision to Action link that you'll be able to find in the stream uh, on Facebook. Um, or even just, you can come up and ask what it is after this if you like. Um, because it has so much more information you know, than we had time to delve into today. Um, and, and yeah, and just a reminder to for your feedback up the back there was to have your not machine, just to um, enhance the experience of the talk today, whether it was beneficial. Um, and apart from that, please keep an eye on our Facebook page and in our ePanui for any future um, talks um, in relation to the Sir Howard uh, Morrison uh, Forming Arts Centre, but also the museum, the lakefront, sir, um, and also the Forest.